Hey guys, today we're going to be learning some different watercolor landscape techniques. To complete this assignment, you're going to need a piece of paper, a messy mat, some watercolor paints, water, a couple paint brushes. We're going to be using a palette to mix different colors, and you might need a paper towel to dry your brush off. So as you can see, there are seven techniques here for this assignment, and I'm going to show you how to do them now. So you're going to start off with a blank piece of paper and at the top we're going to write watercolor landscape techniques. And I'm going to write my name somewhere at the top with my block number. All right, we're done with the pen for now because we're going to label our techniques after our painting actually dries. So the first technique that we're going to practice is called dry brush bush. I'm just going to use one of my paint brushes here and I'm going to put some water into that paint to activate it. And for this first technique, we are going to be using the element of art texture to create the texture of a bush. And we're going to use our the bristles of our paintbrush to create that texture. For this technique, we're going to be mixing a few different colors. And the reason why we're mixing our own colors is because the colors that come straight from our paint tray here are kind of unnatural. So we need to add some brown to our green to make it more of a muted, almost neutrally kind of green color. And it looks a lot more natural, like actual green that you would see outside. So I'm gonna make a couple different greens here. All right, those are very similar, but this one's more brown, this one's more yellowy, and this one has more of a green tint. So now I'm gonna take my dry brush and I'm gonna get some color. We want this to be kind of dry, so I'm gonna put it off to the side. And again, I'm going to dry my paintbrush off some more because this is wet paint, but we do want our paintbrush to be dry, even though we're using wet paint. So I'm just gonna dab a little bit onto my brush here. And I don't care where you guys put these techniques on this paper, as long as you have seven by the end of it. And I'm gonna load these different shades of green on here and I'm gonna start dabbing it on my paper. And since we're using a very dry brush, we should be able to see the, um, you know, the bristles touching our paper. We can actually see that texture. So I'm just gonna do this in kind of the shape of a bush since that's what we are trying to create with this technique. And I kind of want to add some yellow, so I'm just gonna put the tiniest bit of yellow onto my paintbrush. And by the way, I am not squishing my paintbrush. I am lightly tapping it on my paper. Let's grab some more green over here. And I am going to layer these different greens and yellows and browns on top of one another until I fill up most of the white space. If your paintbrush is not dry, then all of these colors are just kind of gonna blend together instead of being their own individual thing, right? And you wouldn't be able to see that texture that we're going for, um, for our bush. And nature is very random, so I am being pretty random with my colors. I'm just grabbing a green, grabbing some brown grabbing one of my colors over here. And again, I am just layering all of that together in sort of a bush shape, which is kind of like an oval. Now we're gonna add a shadow to one side of our bush. And as you can see, I kind of already have one going over here where I've went a little bit heavy handed with my brown, but that's okay. And we want this to be a little bit more wet. So I'm gonna grab one of my wetter greens over here on my paintbrush and I kind of want this to be kind of dark so let me mix some more brown into it because I want this to be more of a shadow and I'm going to paint that loosely on one side of my bush not all of it because I'm just going to say that my light source is coming from the left side so over here would be darker on the right side and to ground our bush, we don't want it to look like it's floating into the sky. So we are going to create a shadow underneath our bush. And you can use any kind of shadowy color like brown, maybe a bluish kind of gray color could be a shadow. So I'm gonna get a little bit of brown color onto my paintbrush, but I really want this shadow to be very loose. So I'm gonna add more water. Um, I'm not going to have as much control over my shadow as I did my bush and I want it to be darker up close to my bush. So I'm going to add some more paint up here to create that cast shadow my bush would be creating on the ground. 
And I'm just gonna add some more brown right at the top of my shadow. And since this is wet, it is bleeding into the water, but I don't want it to be that dark right there. So I'm gonna dry my paintbrush off and I'm just gonna pick up that paint, wipe it on my um, paper towel. Um, you can use your paintbrush to add and your paintbrush can also take away if you make a mistake. So I added a little bit too much brown right there. So I just cleaned my paintbrush off and I let the bristles of my paintbrush absorb that extra paint that I no longer wanted right there. Now we're gonna do a wet on wet bush. And of course, we're gonna start with water and I'm gonna move over to my larger paintbrush. And I'm just gonna paint some water somewhere, wherever I want this technique. And I want this water to be in the shape of a bush. So kind of a circular, ovally, kind of natural organic shape, right? I'm gonna add a little bit more water because I want this to be very free flowing. And I am going to, again, make some more green colors. Maybe I want this to be more of a blue green so I can activate my blue, mix it in to this green and that makes a really pretty, I added a little tiny brown in there to darken it up, but it makes a really pretty blue green color and I'll just tap that into my water um, wherever I decide I want it to go. And I think I need to make some more over here. So I'm gonna get some more blue, some more green and tap it in there. And you want to do a few different shades. So this is more of a blue green. And again, my water is pooling in the middle. So I really don't want that. So I'm just gonna, I just think I have a bit too much water. So I'm just gonna use my paintbrush to kind of pick it up where I don't want it to be anymore. And I wanna make kind of a yellow greenish color over here. So let's do that because I want one side to be blue green and one side to be yellow green so I can add some more of a yellowy kind of green on this side. So again, we need to choose a light source for our bush. And since this side is darker already, I'm just gonna say my light source is coming from the right side, which means the left side of my bush is going to be a bit darker. So I'm gonna add some more darker green shades to that side. And I'm gonna paint a shadow underneath this bush, just like I did for my first bush. You might notice I'm leaving a little white space in between my shadow and my bush over here because I don't want these two colors to mix together. And if I were to have the shadow touching the bush, then that green would start pulling into my shadow. And I really don't want that. So I'm going to leave a little white space in between my shadow and my bush. I want this side to be a little bit darker, so I just added some brown and I put some water on top to help it flow because it's kind of dried a little bit. So you can add more water if it starts to dry as you're working and help that um, those two colors just kind of flow together. All right, our next one is wet on wet with dry brush details. And again, I'm gonna do the same exact thing that I did for this, except for I'm gonna let it dry 100%. And then once it's dry, I'm gonna come back and add some dry brush details on the top. As I'm doing this, you might notice I've just been dabbing where I'm painting instead of you know, actually dragging my brush across the paper because since this is a wet on wet technique, I really just want the water to kind of do the blending for me. Um, my job is to just place my colors where I want them to go and then the water will um, blend those colors together. All right, let's move on to the grass technique. And I'm gonna use a smaller paintbrush for this because this is kind of more of a finer detail. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make kind of a brownish, yellowish color to represent my grass. So mix some brown and some yellow together. Okay, so now I've made some new colors. I am going to start painting loose lines onto my paper anywhere to represent my grass. And I wanna use a few different colors for this. I don't wanna just use green or yellow or brown. I kinda of wanna mix them together. That will help our grass look a little bit more natural. I did dry my paintbrush off a little bit when I first started this because I wanna be able to see the brush strokes. However, it's not a complete dry brush because we're using um, very wet paint to do this. We're gonna use the gradient technique down at the bottom of our grass to create the ground. 
So I'm just gonna add some water down here first and I'm leaving a bit of a white space in between my grass and my ground. And I'm gonna take a darker color here and I want it to be a gradient. So I want it to be darker at the top and get lighter as it goes down. So I'm gonna add some darker shades up at the top. For grass, this is really a layering technique. So I would do one layer, let it dry, then I'll come back and add some more little brush strokes here and there. Um, maybe some darker grass to add some depth into our texture here. You have to let layers dry first before adding your next layer or else they all just kind of blend together. And you can continue to sharpen up those details on your grass by adding um, darker. I always start light with watercolor and then I gradually get darker as I go on with my layers. So whenever you're doing your layering, it's really, really important that you always start lighter. And as you're layering, each layer is gonna get darker and darker. Okay, let's do a tree trunk next. And for this, we're gonna be focusing on browns and yellows. So I already have some of that made here. And what I'm going to do with a fair amount of water on my paintbrush and a fair amount of color, I'm just gonna paint the shape of a tree trunk over here somewhere on your paper, it doesn't matter. And it's really just a rectangle with some texture on the side. So I'm gonna paint this whole thing using one yellowish brown color. I'm not making it really dark yet. Remember, start light and then get darker as you layer. The trunk has texture, right? So I'm kind of adding some frayed ends on the edge of my um, tree trunk here to kind of show that it's not just a straight, perfect rectangle. It is a part of nature, so there is going to be some sort of texture on there. We're gonna start adding shadows to this. Now that we have a base, I wanna make a darker brown over here. And I kinda wanna dry my paintbrush off a little bit and just grab a little bit of pigment. And I'm gonna start adding some details with the darker shade of brown around the edges of my tree trunk. And I'm painting very light with my hand. I'm not pressing my paintbrush down very hard. I'm kind of just barely touching the paper. Now I can go in, ooh, that was kind of dark. If you go too dark too fast, then you can just use some water and try to blend it up into your mid-tone that you've already put down on your paper. And I wanna dry my paintbrush off and kind of blend that brown into my yellowish color that I had. We're adding some lines onto my actual tree trunk just to kind of sharpen up those details a little bit, give it some texture. Okay, if you don't let your layers dry, then all these details, all these layers are just going to start blending into one. Okay, now we're gonna make a tree. And uh, for this, we're gonna use lighter greens and lighter um, yellows. And I'm just gonna start dabbing some color onto my paper and kind of a tree shape. So trees are usually like triangular, so more pointy at the top and then they get wider as they go down. Let me put some green in here. And I'm just kind of dabbing this on pretty randomly with wet paint. This is not dry brush or anything. I'm just going in with a solid color and mixing this yellow and these greens together. Now I'm gonna create the trunk of my tree and we are going to just use a brown, maybe some black again, let me mix it right here, to create a darker brown color. And I'm gonna dry my paintbrush off, grab a little bit of paint, not too much, we don't want it to be too wet because we kinda want this to be more precise. I'm just going to carefully paint the shape of my tree trunk that I want. All right, right now that's looking very flat, so I'm gonna go in with a darker brown and kind of add some shadows to it, maybe some texture lines to make it look more realistic. I could even add a couple lines up in my tree to show that these branches are going in and out of the leaves up here. Okay, um, I kind of want my leaves to be a little bit darker. I want to add some value, so I'm going to grab a darker shade. And since I put my shadow on the left side of my trunk, I know that the leaves are going to be darker also on the left side. So I'm just going to dab a little bit of this darker color 
over on the left side of my tree. Let's create a shadow underneath. Let's ground our objects so they're not floating in the sky. And I'm going to use this kind of bluish color down here. All right, last but not least, we have a path and a lawn. Oh, and I have to come back up here and do my dry details on this bush. But let's do our path and lawn. So we're going to loosely, using wet on wet, kind of mark out the shape of your path. And I'm running out of space over here. So I think I'll do a small path up in this space. Um, so as you're doing this, just be mindful of how big you're doing these things because you have to fit seven techniques on here all together. So I'm just going to get some water because we're going to do wet on wet. And I'm going to paint kind of the shape of my path. We want it to look like it's going back into space. So it's going to be skinny at the top and it's going to get a little bit wider as it comes down. So and then I'm going to start adding some yellows and some browns into my path. Okay, and maybe some greens too. Y'all can have fun with your color choices. You know, we're just going to keep them natural. So we're not going to see much purple in our landscape unless you have a sunset or something going on. But we're mainly using like greens, yellows, and browns. Sometimes a little bit of blue. So what I'm doing now is with a path, we kind of want to mark out, you know, where our path ends and where grass or another type of ground starts. So I'm going to add this blue green over on the side here. And it's okay if it blends together because what I can do is just pick that blue up where I don't want it. Because what I'm doing here is I'm making a dirt path. So obviously this side is dirt and this side is going to be my grass or my hills or whatever. I want to put some more of this over on this side. So this is a very loose. I'm not being very particular with this. I'm not using perspective or anything. I'm just kind of using colors and shapes to mark out my area. And uh, I'm going to let this dry for a minute because I want to be able to add a little bit of a crisper line and it's too wet right now. So let me let this layer dry and then I'll come back and add some darker values to kind of crisp up my edges a little bit. All right, it's dry enough. So I'm just going in with a darker blue green color and I'm trying to crisp up that edge so that it's not blending into my pathway. And I can use some more water to kind of blend it out a little bit. Um, I just added a little bit too much yellow. So I'm gonna try to balance that out with some brown and see what happens. And for this, after I let this dry, cause I'm pretty happy with what I have right here so far. Um, I'm going to start adding some textures on top, like my grassy textures I can start adding. Um, I could start adding a kind of road looking texture or dirt path texture. I could use dry brush to add more of this sort of texture over here, but I cannot add texture to this until it dries 100%. If this is dry yet, and it's dry enough. So if you remember, this is wet on wet with dry brush on top. So I'm going to um, dry my paintbrush off and I'm going to grab a new color, probably something darker than what you have here so that you can actually see it. And I'm just going to start painting some details on top. So this could be branches in your bush or maybe you have berries or something like that. So I'm just barely touching my paper and I'm adding some more details into my bush to kind of make it look more realistic. So after you finish practicing these seven different techniques, um, we are going to let it dry as much as possible. And then you're going to take a pen and you're just going to label each of your techniques, um, depending on which one is which. Okay. So dry brush, bush, wet on wet, all that label it. And then you're going to turn this into me in our turn in basket. Okay, so I hope you guys have fun practicing these different watercolor landscape techniques. I can't wait to see how yours turn out. I know they're going to be amazing because you guys are amazing. All right, I'll see you guys next time. Bye.